Hi there, uh, I'm here with uh, Peter Dahlström, who is the original founder of this amazing studio where I work. So today we're going to talk to him. Hi, uh, I'm Ulf at Huberik, and as some of you know, I work in this uh, really nice studio. Um, I work as Hoborek under the roof of the End Studios, together with Peter and uh, also our colleague uh, Tommy, that works here under the name of Studio Motion. Today, uh, this video is dedicated to Peter and uh, the history of this studio. So I think this video is long overdue because I've been here now for like almost three years. I think it's three years this summer. Yeah, so we should have done this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to keep this like uh, as a timeline, so okay. I want to start with just um, <clears throat> uh, talking about you and your history, how you got into uh, audio recording and how the passion for music and recording started. It's exactly 50 years. 50 years ago. 50 years ago. It started with, mm, I was playing in a Swedish dance band. <laughs> <laughs> like the Swedish version of country music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I played bass. And um, for the first time in my life, I went to a recording studio. Studio. Uh, it was a studio outside Skullrup. Ah, mm. Where Tommy is living. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a guy, uh, uh, Lars Finström, uh, who had a, a, a recording studio. We, uh, we went there and um, recorded some songs and I was hooked, hooked directly. Uh -huh. Well, shit, this, this is the thing I shall do. Not play, uh, record. Okay, it, it started earlier with a two-track machine and uh, my uh, grandpa's band, mm -hmm. drums, v violin and uh, accordion. So I tried to record them and... How old were you then? I think I was uh, nine, ten, eight, nine, ten or something. All right. uh, I thought that was uh, the thing. It's a magic thing to do, to record things and then listen to it. I think a lot of people experienced that when they were kids with just like cassette tapes recording their own voice and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think it's just something different for us. Like you go beyond that fascination with just recording yourself and then thinking a bigger picture. That you really yeah, wanted. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how it started. And I asked Lars of Finstrom, wow, okay, is it okay if I'm here? Mm -hmm. Uh, helping you with something yeah of course come to me and so it started taking down microphones and make coffee and of course clean and uh, and the only thing i want to do was uh, oh i have to mix i, I have to uh, get in touch with that thing yeah. so after three months i said to him well lars i don't think i learn anything then he told me, uh, go outside and uh, put mics on that drum kit. Yeah. And then I said, uh, then I understand. Wow, I learned something yeah. because I could do it without problems. And then uh, one or two months later, he told me that uh, here's a tape. And I I think it was Man for Man. All oh, right. They have been there mixing uh, their uh, record. Yeah. I don't know the name of that now. But uh, he told me, you can take this and you can try, mm. try. So I did and, uh, well, understand that this is something I sh shall, uh, shall do yeah. Yeah. in the future. All my family, my mother was pianist. Yeah. My mother's brother was a, a concert pianist. My, my, uh, my cousin played bass. He, he learned me to play bass. Yeah. Uh, my... Uh, Father was a jazz guitar player. All right. Yeah, and my grandfather has his own band. Yeah. My other grandfather, he was an artist, right. a painter. All right. Yeah. So something of that. In the creative I probably, arts. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> and then I built my own studio, my first. It ended up the story with Lars was that it ended up that I bought all his equipment eight years later. I think. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But did you work there for eight years then? Or? Yeah, for, uh, no, yes, or yes and no. He sent me to uh, Germany yeah. and uh, Deutsche Grammophon. All right. Yeah. So I was there for, uh, I think, two years at least nice. working. 
it's a pretty good place to learn, I guess. Absolutely, but I was the same guy there putting yeah. up microphones. <laughs> Yeah, Jer but that, that was the way you did it, I guess, back in the days. Mm -hmm. It's a bit... Yeah, it's and a listen. Bit, yeah. And listen and look. Uh, what's he doing? He's doing nothing. He's just doing yeah. that. Okay. Now I understand the, uh, that it's very important with good microphones yeah. and good preamplifiers and skip the EQ. Yes, as skip, as skip the EQ as far as you can. Yes. Try to capture the sound at the source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. I think it, it seems like uh, nowadays, in the modern days, every, all the recording equipment is so available for everyone. Mm -hmm. The way I did it is like probably most people nowadays do it. I just bought some stuff and I started learning myself. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I ended up here, but it took it took so much time before I learned enough. Uh, I think learning the way you did is probably better to have, yeah, yeah. To have you work with a mentor yeah. from the start. Yeah, absolutely. So and you don't ask anything, you just look. Mm. And then, uh, uh, yeah, I think that's a, a very good thing to do, to learn this. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's hard to find Yeah. these days, I guess. Yeah, nobody's interested. No. You bought his stuff and then you built your own studio? Yeah, but before that, before I bought his stuff, yeah. I re already uh, built Okay, so you had your studios. own studio. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then, yeah. all right. I then I bought his stuff. And then I built a really big studio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other ones was not so big because it was in Malmö and it's very expensive. Yeah. So then I moved out on the countryside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A place called Löberöd. Yeah. Was that in the like old church or something? Yeah. yeah. In an old uh, yeah an old church. Yeah. Mission house. Mission house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, Mission I'm not sure what to call it in English, know. but it's mm -hmm. it's basically a small church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there I was for a couple of years, and then I moved to an other mission house, yeah. <laughs> bigger, of course. And then I re worked really hard. I had a lot of bands and a lot of uh, working with, with uh, record companies. But then uh, that time there, there was money. Yeah. But then suddenly it says, poof. I, I was working for one company. Yeah. Uh, and then they uh, get bankrupt. Oh, yeah. Then I decided to, uh, no, I put my gear in uh, in storage and I yeah. rent out the studio. Mm. And uh, because I was working so much for SVT, the Swedish television company, yeah. Television, Swedish radio, doing a lot of live gigs. And, yeah. and uh, so it doesn't affect me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I put it aside. And then I found this house. Yeah. 1990. Six, I think it was. Right. Was it empty when you found it, or? Yeah, it was empty. Yeah, uh, there had be a how do you say metal shop. Yeah, here. metal workshop. Metal workshop here. We bought it. Yeah. Me and uh, Ajax, my 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 friend. Yeah. He's, he's Re now, recently passed away. Yeah, recently passed away, on a gig, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but that's another story. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as we said before, you are the like the original founder of this studio yeah, yeah, yeah. together with Ajax then yeah yeah so together, you had yeah. uh, you had the studio and uh, like a rental service for yeah we had a live sound rental and a lot of backline yeah of course we had a big uh, backline uh, company in Denmark that we owned and then we we start to build this studio so just, just uh, a sidetrack that is is that like what because this st studio is like amazing it's really big and spacious mm -hmm. and has a lot of cool stuff like mm. gear and instruments so mm. do you think it was crucial for building the studio that you had other income streams yeah like of course you would never have done this just from recording rock and roll no bands. no 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 it's too much this building uh how do you say construction yeah was not so expensive yeah no because we took uh, care of old stuff old yeah. uh, plasterboards yeah and stuff that we picked up Okay, so, so most of the stuff is reused yes, materials. Yes, yes, right. yes, yes. Old school so doors. Very and... environment friendly then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. Great, Mo I would times. love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we start to build 98. Yeah. It took us one year to build um, the main room and the control room. All right. Yeah. And that small 
vocal booth. All right, yeah, because that was what was here to begin with. Was From the, the beginning, the big, yes. mm-hmm. big live room, control room, and one. Yeah, and of booth. course the kitchen. That yeah. was a kitchen, but nothing upstairs. And and it took us uh, one year between eight o'clock in the morning and zero thirty. Yeah, every night, half past midnight. Yeah, half past midnight. Because then there was a, a television show called yeah. The Woman's Prison. Ah, yeah, yeah. Finn who Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> so, so that was our uh, stop working. Uh, okay, so you point. watched that and then you went to sleep and then... Then we looked at that exactly two or three minutes and then... <laughs> and then up and again. And then oh. we... In that time we was even doing a lot of live gigs. Yeah. Me and Ajax and of course. But uh, one year... Exactly one year, actually. I think this is very like important and interesting that I think a lot of people like me have been dreaming about building a really big studio, mm-hmm. but the only thing we do is like recording bands. And if mm-hmm. you do that, then you have to like shut down mm-hmm. the business and build a studio. But in your case, you had other businesses that probably bring in more money than just recording bands. Yeah. So you can put that into... So basically the, the studio is more like a passion project. Or was it intended to be like a money-bringing thing? Yeah, it was a... You had it in combination with other businesses. It was a, it, Actually, it was a dream. When I saw this house first yeah. time, I said, wow. that The main room yeah. was, wow. Yeah, it's really, yeah. really spacious. And the control room that you can build it so, build it so big. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, have, I don't think I've been in any other no, control room this big. I don't think uh, there is so many in this size, no. actually. After a year or something, we um, uh, start to build the ESO boots. Okay, so that was only one year later. I think it was one, one or, one or uh, maybe two years later. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, those are really gorgeous. Uh, they look really good. Yeah. I think they bring it makes the whole studio feel like a very like a serious studio. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you, you have to have it if you're gonna if you want to record like I want to record, you have to have it. Yeah. Of course we built the accommodation. I think that was one year later after the ISO boots. Yeah. There's everything, some always something to do. Yeah. Something to repair, something to uh, <laughs> Yeah, I've noticed. Yeah. You went through and recapped the whole console like one year ago. Yeah, but that's that, that, that's your. Uh... Yeah, I we didn't help much. I helped with uh, no, replacing but... the the pan pots. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but that well, you came in, Tommy, and you. Yeah. And I said, "Wow, it's brought some life." In. <laughs> yeah, brought some life again, and I I I got more and more interested in uh, keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. If we go back to the the construction of the studio, yeah, you you found a house and you like fell in love with the building. Did you do all the designing of the studio yourself, or no. did you? We were lucky because there's a guy in Stockholm who's called Lennart Nilsson. Yeah, he designed he designed um, Bärvalhallen's oh, yeah. main control room where this were before. Yes, and that's the whole story. Mm. I found this in in a paper. Uh, for sale yeah mm-hmm. so i bought it and um, then we called him yeah and asked him please can you help us design a very big control room and yeah he said no no i don't i no no i have no time for that okay so oh, sorry because we bought this desk yeah ah you d- did okay <laughs> okay send me some uh, schedules yeah and then he sent it back yeah yeah <laughs> on a hand-drawn yeah. paper do like this then i come and, and uh, measure it yeah okay so we did that and he came and we said no 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 you have to uh, change this mm. okay then we changed that and then he was back again well no it's really good but the floor here no you have to uh, it was yeah, uh, only like- a wooden floor here same as in the back. Yeah, it's a wooden floor in the whole room, but like just in front of the racks here, it's what is it? Five centimeters? Yeah, it's like I, like it's this, I think. Yeah, with sand and uh, yeah. <laughs> everything. Then it went back and uh, do some new uh, measures. Yeah, and said, "Wow, 
this is perfect. Nice. And it really is. But you also said when you built the rack, uh, something changed. In yeah, the when we put this, this on. The flat surface. The flat surface yeah. that's bigger than the rack. Yeah. It's, we got a standing wave. All right. Yeah. What? What's this? So that, that's why we have to do that. In All right. Roof. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a picture of that yeah, so you yeah. can see it. So then that was a way. When you opened the studio here, mm -hmm. you from what I remember you said you had like pretty big uh, clients from yes, the start yes, like yes. Uh, Swedish television and yes, or was yes, it TV yes. TV, TV 4 and yeah. S and the SVT uh, Swedish oh, yeah. television too and Swedish radio and yeah. I worked a lot for them recording uh, so there were some like live sessions with pretty famous yeah, bands. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sweden Rock. Yeah, everything on Sweden Rock, not on the main stage, but the uh, well, the other stages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah that was for live live recordings. Yeah, yeah. Did you mix that here or? Uh, often, yeah. Some some things I mixed here, but yeah. often in my recording bus. All right. Because it was live. But the uh, the kind of clients you had, like actually in the studio. Uh, the first client was TV4. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was, uh, I think it was 10 bands Brainpool, um, Loose Goats. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember everyone now. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you had pretty big. Uh, yeah, yeah. Big, uh, big projects too. Yeah, like yeah. Right and good money and everything. That's we, perfect. And we made it here. That was the first thing, big, really big thing here. Yeah. And then it was, uh, then uh, Toast um, found uh, the studio, of course. Yeah. And Bob Hoon um, was here, Christian Shelvando. Sahara Hot Nights, were they here too? or oh, Sahara Hot Nights? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They were here, and uh, Hofmeister, and yeah. uh, The Sounds, many big bands. Yeah. One really famous, Tolvan in Sweden. Uh, you you didn't engineer all the records, but no. I know what what's your favorite. Because from what I understand, you mostly do like big band yeah. and jazz yeah. stuff. The things I've heard is like you do the, those things really really good. <laughs> yeah, well, what my favorite is to do or yeah. my yeah my favorite is actually big bands, jazz, mm. and uh, some kind of nice pop. Yeah, and of course funky stuff yeah and um, remote tone um, yeah, soul yeah soul music yeah yeah soul soul things i really love that you have had like in-house engineers in the studio too right yeah That's, yeah 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 that took care of uh, stuff. yeah 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 michael uh, gumilsek yeah yeah working here for many many years i think uh, 10 years or something all right when uh, when it went down in the studio market yeah. of course he had to have another out of work yeah and of course, other producers and engineers have been working here. Yeah. Of course. And they just rented the studio and the equipment. You told me before it was totally different times. So you can really... Yeah. Be, yeah. People paid a lot of money for yeah. one day. Yeah, I can really understand that when you come from the that old ways mm -hmm. with that with those kind of budgets. Because I've been talking to other studio engineers and producers too that were working a lot back in those days. Mm -hmm. I was like, sometimes it was like fantasy money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and it like went down pretty quickly. Yeah, really, really quickly. So, so I can really understand that. Like, when I met you, I met you through Tommy. That you get to know him first. Mm -hmm. Like you, you were not really that interested in doing studio stuff at that time. No, because I had so much other work to yeah. do. Yeah, outside the, this house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I was thinking of. Uh, really to close down to have it the main room <laughs> for garage uh, yeah <laughs> for, for my my red cars yeah the garage door is all yeah was already it, there <laughs> it's there actually so uh, i was thinking about that and uh, have this of course the, the control room like it is and yeah. the big room like it is just take out the cars and record something yeah. uh, then i met tommy, tommy and yeah. uh, you offered him to rent it yeah but he couldn't afford to do it himself, so no. he contacted me and asked if I wanted to yeah. share the space. It feels like we are on a slow but steady movement yeah, upwards up, again. Yeah, of course. I think me and Tommy comes from the new generation and we were already... I, I'm not sure how to like put it in words, but it seems like if you just adapt to the new way, try to be as efficient as possible and keep tight budgets, 
then uh, there is a lot of work to find still. Yeah, absolutely. And like now we're really we are really busy here at yeah. the moment. Yeah. So we just one thing gives another. Yeah. Wow, what a studio! We must tell our friends. Yeah. yeah. Poof. For how long was there no activity here before we started? I think for for three years it was really low. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean that's also that you said like one thing gives another, but I found. I had a period in my life where I didn't do much recordings, and then you go in the other direction that you kind of, no one asks you to do anything anymore. No, yeah, so not you, here. You, you lose but... you lose a lot of connections in that area. Yeah, but yeah. then when you start work again, then it's just coming up again. Yeah. Because of course I said no to many because yeah. I no I don't I have no time. Yeah. And it's t- a too big a thing to turn up again. Yeah. Oh, you, well, I must fix that, and I must fix that, and, and, that, and like this. Yeah. I knew channels in the desk was not working, and uh, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But you took care of that now. <laughs> yeah, I did, actually. <laughs> and also, the like the setup we have, have now with Outboard Gear is really nice, too. It seems like we have updated it a lot. Yeah. The last three years. There was a lot of things, but... I mean, you've been building those uh, LA two A's yeah. from like from yeah. original parts, and even me and Tommy brought in like microphones and output gear. So with the collection we have now is outstanding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, it's, we don't miss anything. No. And, yeah, uh, maybe a sh- live chamber in the basement. Yeah, we actually talked about that today. Yeah, we're in the Atlantis studio in Stockholm to do a vinyl engravement and. Uh, Janne there showed me their echo chamber, so I got really hooked on that. And now we're thinking about building an echo chamber, yeah. <laughs> an echo chamber, and we'll we're there. <laughs> we have everything we need mm-hmm. for a really true vintage recording. That's been my kind of motto to have uh, like your heart in the vintage world, but also be adapt the modern stuff that you have to. Of course. Like have some get the get the character and soul from vintage stuff and then try to be as efficient with with, mm. with the modern stuff as possible. Mm. Mm. I think the last thing I want to talk about is the monitors. Mm. Um the Dean Audio, the big ones have been here like almost since you built. Yeah, near I think eighteen years. Eighteen or nineteen years. One yeah. year I, I had my old uh, Tanois. Yeah. Mm. Was the control room designed around the Tanois? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But did you have to do any um, no, they, they, changes when you put the... No, no. Dean Audio went here and matched okay. the, the loudspeakers All right. to the room. Okay. They did a measurement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... yeah. They did everything. I was looking for new monitors Yeah, for, I think, one year at least. Yeah. Everybody was talking about Janelek. You must have Janelek. I hate Janelek. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There seems to be a lot of love and hate for those. The, the yeah. people that are used to them love them, and the people that don't like them. Yeah, really it's like hate them. like coriander or not like coriander. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I fell in love with this uh, Gene Audio immediately yeah. when I heard them. I heard the first I heard was BM six. Yeah. I said what? I was listening to one of my uh, referent uh, or the referent song I had that time. Yeah. It was Jello Jackets. All right. Mm. And suddenly I heard new instruments in in those speakers, yeah. the BM6. I think we can like wrap up. Yeah, I think so. We got a full Peter Dahlström story. <laughs> a full story, I think that will take a week. In, so, uh, we in, just rela- scratch... in relation to, to studio yeah, stuff. Yeah. We just scratch the... Surface. Yeah, surface. It's been nice. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Cheers. Där kom coronan som en liten ask. Jag fick en snuskorn i alltså.